You know, back when I was growing up, both of my grandfathers were Republicans, and they both were believers, but they kind of differed on their religious views because one was Baptist, the other was Pentecostal, so they didn't see eye to eye on the Bible, but the one thing that they did agree on was they both didn't have anything good to say about televangelists, and I remember growing up, they would always warn me about these guys that were on TV just grifting in the name of God. And they would talk about how that they weren't real men of God. And the ministers in my part of the world would even preach against those type of preachers and tell people, don't fall for that. Don't send them their, your money. They're just trying to grift you. But then they saw the ultimate grifter, Donald Trump, come along, and they realized that you can absolutely sell anything to anybody. And they all decided to jump in and cash in on the grift. And now you got these prosperity preachers like Kenneth Copeland, who's one of the creepiest ones out there. He is full blown on the MAGA train right now. And that's because he looked around and went, hey, I can, I can grift these people too. I can bring these people into the fold and I can grift them. Now, Kenneth Copeland, for those of you that don't recognize that name, he's the one that's got the real crazy eyes. And um, he's always bragging about his wealth. Uh, he has got a net worth of $760 million dollars. Uh, he has an 18,000 square foot mansion and he has a fleet of private jets and he brags about it and says the reason why that he is in the position he's in with all of his wealth is because the Lord has blessed him. And if you will bless him by giving him more money, then the Lord will bless you and one day you will have all of that wealth. It's one of the truly most disgusting things that I've ever seen. But of course, this guy now has latched on to uh, Donald Trump and uh, he realizes that he can sell his grift to them as well. And we're going to listen to some clips here from him because, folks, this is absolutely cringe. But, yeah, this guy is on the MAGA train right now, and he fits right in. Take a look. In school board elections, judges, sheriffs, right. mayors, city managers, college presidents, those that refuse to hold to your will and do it, remove them and put someone in there that will. Okay, I have to stop right there real quick and make this point again because anytime they start calling for God to remove people from government and to install certain people in government, uh, I have to pump the brakes and say there's no Bible to back any of that up. Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and unto God what is God's. Uh, the church and the state is even supposed to be separate in the Bible. And there's no Bible that says one day there will be a new government installed that will restore Christianity. It's not there. But what this guy says next is what really made the headlines. Take a look at this ridiculous clip. And we know it is not your will that little babies be killed in the womb. It is not your will to make your own perversion instead of the peace of God. And we pray for the people. The devils are fighting and trying to ruin their lives with perverted ideas and perverted ways. The people that are, that are ad addicted to pornography and addicted to the things of, this, of the flesh in this world. And we break the power. We break the power of the homosexual lesbian spirits Yes. that are trying to ruin our children right. and ruin this nation. Get down from there. Amen. We sit by the throne. You are under our feet. Yeah, he's praying against the lesbian spirits. He actually said that out loud. The lesbian spirits. We're all supposed to be afraid. Folks, I got to be honest with you. I am so sick and tired of hearing from these kind of people. You know, I live in the Bible Belt and have my entire life, so I've always been surrounded by this, and I've always been sitting here crying bullshit from the time I was a little kid. I've sat here before on the channel about how that I was removed from Sunday school class for asking too many questions. I've always been a Doubting Thomas. I've always rocked the boat. I've never fully believed in it. I'm agnostic today, but I'm so tired of these people and their religion and them using their religion to beat people over the head. If these people truly do believe in the Word of God, they believe the Bible is the Word of God, they believe Jesus is the Son of God, they believe all the things you're supposed to believe to make it to the other side, then they have to believe that, you know, that you could go to hell for your sins. So why is it they cherry-pick out the sins that they hate the most, but yet they give people like Kenneth Copeland a pass 
because the Bible says it's easier for a rich man to go, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It also says to take all of your wealth, give it to the poor and follow Christ. So how is it that they cherry pick out the, the, the stuff that they want to use against people they hate, but then they'll sit back and give someone like this a pass and that's perfectly okay. And no matter how hard they work and no matter how hard they pray, they will never have the money. They will never have the possessions of a Kenneth Copeland. But because he spews the same hatred that they feel in their heart, they will support it. And they'll throw their last dollar at it to keep it moving. And they'll throw their last dollar at Trump. And the two of them can get up on stage together and both sell Bibles and sneakers at the same time. And they would have an audience sitting there eating out of the palm of their hand. An audience who can't even afford to eat out of the palm of their hand. And they do so because they aim their hatred toward people that they hate and toward people they don't understand. And meanwhile, there are people with a boatload of skeletons in their own closet. There are people who make mistakes every day of their life. There are people who has no business whatsoever casting a stone at anyone. And it's so ridiculous that they'll go into the book and they'll cherry pick out those verses to use to weaponize it against other people and then use those verses and give those verses to politicians who will then use it to weaponize it against an entire group of people. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to a matter of belief because there's no evidence or science to back up any of it. It's just a bunch of made up stories that people choose to believe in or not. And we let people like that get a hold of an ancient book like that, twist it to their benefit, twist it to use it against the people they hate and dislike. And then those are the same people that wants to ban books that educates children. They're the same people that wants to, that wants to ban books and stop children from learning about history. They don't want our children to learn about slavery. They want children to be taught that black people got some good carpentry skills out of the deal. They want that kind of horse shit pushed on people, and then they want to sit back and call us the groomers. They want to sit back and say, we're the ones grooming children, when in reality, they're grooming children from day one because they take children, and they teach them from a book where there's no evidence to back it up. It's just their belief. If, if I teach my child that two plus two equals four, that's not my belief. That's, that's, that's a fact of life. Two plus two equals four. I could, I could tell my kid that, and it will be true no matter where he goes in life. He, he, can go for, he can go from one family to the next here in town, and in every family he walks in, two plus two will still equal four. But your personal belief about the Bible can change from one house to the next, from one person to the next. Every one of your coworkers sees it just a little bit differently. Every one of your family and friends sees it just a little bit differently. And it all comes down to a matter of faith and a matter of belief and not a matter of fact. So the only groomers in this scenario are the Kenneth Copelands of the world. The only groomers are the ministers. They're the ones grooming because they're teaching children from a book that's not based in reality. And they're giving their interpretation of this book that isn't based in reality. And out of everything they could have picked out of that book, they could have picked out the love your neighbor part. They could have picked out the give the hungry something to eat and the thirsty something to drink and visit your neighbor and welcome the refugees, the people coming from a foreign land, welcome them in. They could have embraced that part of this book, but no, they had to dig into the, to the oldest scripture they could find and yank out some stuff that they could use to weaponize it against people they hate. And they're sitting back cheering for the government to get a hold of a book like this not realizing that if the government gets a hold of a book like that and then sees it or interprets it differently and decides one day that they're no longer useful? Do the people sitting there throwing their money at Donald Trump and Kenneth Copeland ever stop in their tracks to think, wait, you know, hold on. Now, if I sit here and throw my money at these guys and I want them to push their religion, that's one thing. But what if one day they see it just a little bit differently than me and suddenly they say that what me and my wife are doing is wrong? And they think that we should be shut down, and they think we should be we should be prayed out of the of the scenario. They never stop and think that when you turn over the reins to someone like that, then it can always come back to bite you. They they never stop and think that one through. I don't think they've got it in them to. But Kenneth Copeland has always made me sick. Uh, he studied under Oral Roberts, and that guy made me sick as a kid. They all make me sick. 
Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, J Reverend Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, every one of them. And, you know, I, I don't usually say things like this to my, in this, in my videos, but I really don't care anymore. If there is a hell, I hope those guys go to it because of all the grifting they did. I, I don't really feel any sorry for saying that. And there's people say, well, you shouldn't say that. You might face God one day in judgment. The first thing I'm going to say is, hey, is Kenneth Copeland in there? Because if he is, I, I don't want to spend eternity here. I'll go somewhere else. I, I'll go down in hell. At least there's good music down there. It's so ridiculous that we're still having to sit here and have these conversations. But we will be as long as people like that keep running their mouths.